In this video, we'll go over the sixth postulate of quantum mechanics, uh, which tells you how the state of a system evolves uh, in time. So this postulate states that the time evolution of the state of a system, which we're denoting by the cat psi t, is given by the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, which we'll shorten to TDSE. And this is a first order differential equation in time uh, shown over here. I is the usual complex number. H bar is the reduced Planck constant. And H hat is uh, the, ha the Hamiltonian of the system. And because it's a first order differential equation in time, we need to also have an initial condition. Uh, so the state of the system at time equal to zero. So this is an important postulate because uh, it presents the Schrodinger equation as a fundamental building block of quantum mechanics. And the reason, one of the reasons that this equation uh, is compatible with the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics is that it preserves the normalization of the state. And we'll see what that means over here. So formally, if you just think of this as some quantity, this is a separable first order differential equation. Uh, so we're only going to consider for now a time independent uh, Hamiltonian. So the solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation is given by this Okay, so this is the general solution to the Schrodinger equation. So if you're able to express uh, this operator uh, in some mathematical way, then you've solved the Schrodinger equation in general. However, we saw in postulate four that uh, ket psi is related to the probability of uh, obtaining a certain measurement in quantum mechanics. And for things to be a proper probability, uh, if you add up all of the possible outcomes, they need to add up to one. And that's what I'll refer to as normalization. So for the time-dependent Schrodinger equation to be useful, it has to preserve that normalization. So if you start out with a normalized state psi zero, later on in time, the state needs to still be normalized. Otherwise, you either won't preserve probability or you have to constantly renormalize at different points in time, which wouldn't be very useful. So we say that the Schrodinger equation must preserve normalization as the state evolves in time. Uh, so what I mean by that is if the initial state is normalized, so that means that the inner product uh, is equal to one, we wanna know if, uh, so if this is equal to one, will it still be true at some later time t? Okay, so we're gonna show that by starting out from the general solution to the Schrodinger equation. And we're going to calculate uh, the bra, so, that we take the complex or the uh, 
her mission the transpose of the operator and uh, this has to operate let me rewrite it this has to you get the bra over here And this is at time equals to zero. Uh, this little dagger over here is the Hermitian conjugate. Since uh, H, the Hamiltonian corresponds to a physical observable, it's a Hermitian operator. So the Hermitian conjugate is just equal to the original operator. So when you take the inner product of the state at some time t. What you get is something that looks like that. And generally, when you work with operators, you have to be careful with these quantities. Uh, they're generally uh, you can generally follow the usual rules of exponents where if they're multiplying, uh, you can add up the powers. In this particular case, because the operator is the same, we can combine them. So this uh, is equal to the unit operator. So we're left at the inner product of the state at time t is equal to the inner product of this of the state at time zero. And because this was equal to one, that means that the Schrodinger equation preserves the normalization of uh, the state of the system. And this is important for the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics. So this concludes the postulates, the basic postulates of quantum mechanics. Uh, in the next following videos, we're going to go through uh, what's known as the position and momentum basis. So these are continuous bases as opposed to the discrete bases that we've been working with up until now. And we'll arrive at the uh, Schrodinger equation expressed in position space, which is the one that you're perhaps more familiar with.